Hey, it's Professor Dave. Let's talk about Bayer Villiger oxidation. He knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. So in the previous tutorial, we looked at Beckman rearrangement, and we're going to see a lot of similarities here with the Bayer Villiger oxidation. So let's refresh our memories. Remember, with the Beckman rearrangement, uh, if we were looking at a cyclic uh, substrate, we saw that we were going from a six-membered ring uh, ketone to a seven-membered lactam. So essentially, what the Beckman rearrangement did, uh, if we just zoom all the way out, is we just took a nitrogen atom and we stuck it right in the middle of this carbon-carbon bond right there. And so now we've got a nitrogen and we know that a cyclic amid is called a lactam. That's what that functional group is called. So bayer villiger oxidation is actually very similar. We're just inserting an oxygen atom instead. So this was uh, 1899, uh, two fellas, Adolf Bayer and Victor Villiger. Uh, so uh, again, some, some pretty old chemistry here, but it's very similar. We know that by, by doing bayer villiger oxidation, this is just a generic symbol for oxidation. We'll look at the mechanism in a moment. We're going from that same substrate, cyclohexanone, to a seven-membered ring, which is a cyclic uh, ester, and a cyclic ester is called a lactone, right? So we've got this lactone. So this is very useful if you want to go from a ketone to an ester or from a cyclic uh, ketone to a lactone, uh, and in particular if we want to form a seven-membered ring, because that's a little bit harder to make than six-membered rings. Six-membered rings form very readily because they're the most stable kind of ring we can get. So this is an interesting way to make a seven-membered ring. And so uh, let's take a look at the mechanism here. Uh, the, the, the key reagent is going to be a peracid. And so when we say peracid, and th this may be familiar, uh, we, we uh, remember MCPBA is how we achieved epoxidation. Remember when we looked at epoxides? So we've seen peracids before. And the key thing here is it looks like a carboxylic acid, but you'll notice we've got some uh, alkyl and then a carbonyl and then an oxygen and then another oxygen and then the proton. So we have an oxygen-oxygen covalent bond, which is a little bit atypical, right? We usually don't see that. Uh, we usually see oxygen-carbon bonds, oxygen-hydrogen bonds, but here we've got this oxygen-oxygen bond. So what we're going to do is uh, first, it is an acid, right? And so if, if it's an acid, we're going to do an acid-base reaction. The only only thing that's going to act as a base is this oxygen. So let's go ahead and protonate, uh, use this peracid to protonate the ketone, and so that's protonated there. Now that that's protonated, this carbon is highly susceptible to nucleophilic attack. We've got a negative charge here, so let's, let's have this come over here, and we're going to kick that up here. So we're going to neutralize that oxygen. So now we've got our hydroxyl, and we've got this whole thing on there, the rest of that, uh, the rest of that peracid. And so this is the part that uh, not only does the product look similar to the Beckman rearrangement, but also we're going to see a rearrangement step here that's a bit similar mechanistically to what we saw earlier. And so let's scramble this around. Let's have this come back down. And instead of kicking this off, what if we break this carbon-carbon bond and have this carbon coordinate instead to this oxygen. And we're going to kick that off. And so we can see this oxygen forms this pi bond here. And then we're breaking open the ring momentarily so that that bond can go and coordinate to this oxygen and kick this off. So you might think this is a little weird. We're going from a six-membered ring to a seven-membered ring. That's not so favorable. But what is favorable is we're, 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 uh, we're, this oxygen-oxygen uh, bond is breaking. And oxygen-oxygen bond, uh, oxygen -oxygen bonds are very weak. They, uh, they have very low bond dental piece. So it's very favorable to be breaking this oxygen-oxygen covalent bond. Right? That's why when we look at peroxides, they're really good candidates for initiation steps to, uh, to uh, initiate radical reactions. Because because it's very easy to homolyze an oxygen-oxygen bond because it's so weak. And so this is an easy bond to break. And so what happens is we get that rearrangement and we get our seven-membered seven ring here, right? If this carbon is now attached to that oxygen instead, that oxygen has now essentially inserted itself into the ring. And uh, we end up, right, if this now we don't have a peracid anymore, we just have that part. That's just now a regular carboxylic acid. So that's not going to promote any, uh, any more reactions, really. Um, so we did that, and we've got our uh, we've got our lactone. 
So <clears throat> that's the basic mechanism here. Uh, we can see this is the key step here, right? This rearrangement is where you go from the six-membered ring to the seven-membered ring where the oxygen inserts. Two, uh, two, very, uh, two, two points that are a little bit minor but maybe important to, to note. Uh, if we were doing this not on a cyclic substrate but actually on a linear substrate, which means one of the alkyl groups would formally migrate uh, instead of a ring just getting larger, we would have retention of stereochemistry. So whatever stereochemistry we would have on an alkyl fragment, when that migrates and coordinates to the oxygen, that stereochemistry will be retained. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. And then the other thing to keep in mind is that per acids are, are highly reactive. So you have to be careful what substrate you're using because if there are uh, other functional groups that are easily oxidized, like pi bonds or some other functional groups, that is going to kind of mess up your reaction a little bit. So, but this is great with, with cyclohexanone. That's no problem. This is going to go wonderfully to the seven-membered ring, to the lactone. Uh, and so that's a little bit about bayer villiger oxidation. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.